Hi there, I'm Don Logue McCarthy. I lead the Accenture Cloud business in Ireland. Welcome to the Accenture Cloud video series. This is a series that explores the transformational potential that cloud can offer businesses as they look to the future. We have seen widespread and accelerated digital transformation with many organizations reimagining their business and using the cloud as their future operating model. At Accenture, we partner with the world's largest cloud providers to deliver this transformation at scale, helping to push the boundaries of what's possible. So, who's using the cloud? What benefits does it bring and where do we start? To look at these questions, I'm delighted to be joined by Lucy Thornton, Head of Technology Solutions, and Michael Hogan, Head of Field Sales Corporate from our partners, Google. You're both very welcome. Great to see you. Thank you, okay. And maybe start with you, Lucy. You know, we talk a lot about building better software and making smarter business decisions. Do enterprises really know they can do this with Google Cloud? Um, well, the answer is not enough. Right. And I don't think it's just a Google challenge, by the way. I don't think enough organizations know that they can build things in the cloud and that actually they can take advantage of that. And if they are, it's being very technology led and not business driven. So, you know, here at Google, some of the areas that we're investing in is how do we look at an operating model? How do we work with businesses at a business level to have business conversations and understand the real ambition of the organization and then how we can translate that into a meaningful operating model, as you said in your intro? and then into something that we can deliver as technologists. And I suppose, Michael, then to you, why as a leader in an enterprise would I consider Google Cloud as a big part of my cloud answer? Just to add to what Lucy was saying at the start, I, I think uh, the point is that more and more enterprises are seeing Google as a, a viable alternative in terms of a cloud offering across all industry segments. And, and that applies whether you're digital native or whether you're, you know, uh, a relatively late adopter to cloud. For me, one of the more compelling reasons why people are looking at Google Cloud as an offering is in terms of our data capabilities. Google has invested heavily around AI, ML, data, data analytics. So the, the most important question I get asked from organizations is, Google help us to better leverage our data, to use our data in real time so that we can make smarter decisions and drive that data driven innovation that Google is synonymous with. Remember, we've nine brands that have one billion daily users on our Google platform. It's that platform that we resell to Google Cloud customers. And as more and more uh, organizations are starting to realize that they're seeing actually Google is the platform of innovation and data-driven innovation particularly. So I think the answer is data-driven innovation is the key thing from a Google Cloud perspective. I suppose what you're both saying then is that all this heritage that you've built up over many years on these large global digital services is what I'm going to use as an enterprise. But I suppose, Lucy, where do I start on that journey? Because how do I think about the outcomes I want to achieve as a business? Yeah, and Google's the biggest digital native in the world, right? So I think that's been one of the real main challenges that as a business we've had to overcome is the idea that organizations are traditional in nature um, and we've got to meet them on the journey where they are. And I would always say, even if an organization is quite mature in their cloud adoption, we need to go back to the value case for cloud. Um, and that's our opportunity to look at that business engagement and then we can align, again, that operating model, the cost of technology, but actually then we can actually look at the intricacies and the, the complexity of the technology stack itself. But I start with sort of like, you know, those areas of the business, those uh, product lines and those services that you need to deliver and how high performing are they and how high performing are the applications underneath? You know, what's the severity of your outages, the cost of your outages? How can we address these through cloud? How do we look at things like your, your innovation um, you know, how do we create that culture of putting developers right at the heart of your business so they understand the context of the business problems that they're solutioning for? And then how do we give them the tools to make them be able to fail fast and build minimum viable products and proof of concepts quickly to meet those business challenges? Um, but ultimately, yeah, we will look at the cost of technology because we know there's some quick wins, but we almost don't want to hand that cost straight back on, those cost savings straight back onto the business. We want to use that, those cost savings as an investment to actually modernize your organization and modernize your applications um, so that you can take advantage of like cloud native services because we know that that's where the value of cloud really lies. Would you say that the position that Google are taking around very focused on that 
software engineering, the building new products piece is quite a unique selling point. Yeah, 100%. And we're actually seeing those outcomes recognised at a market level in terms of our approach. Like Michael and I last year, we worked with um, a print, print and press organisation, wasn't yeah, it? And yeah, yeah being incredibly disrupted, you know, as an industry. And they're looking at it going, how are we going to reinvent ourselves? Um, and, you know, we said, OK, they run some pressure to exit a data centre, really tactical, you know, how do we move stuff out of a data centre? And we kind of went, look, this is an opportunity for you to set up your cloud strategy for the next five, ten years. Let's realign with the business. We've all been in that situation where the whole technology organisation is tracking it green, you know, but the business can't deliver the value that they need and the projects that they need to. So let's have a look at this right now. And we did, you know, we started with Cloud Value Case. We looked at a high velocity migration with that organisation. Um, and we did, you know, we decommissioned applications and we took away a lot of risk that the business was carrying by upgrades and things like that. But ultimately, we forecasted a revenue model. We took those matrix, we took all of those points, those data points that were created in the cloud value case. We monitored them through the transformational program to make sure they were realized. And then ultimately, you know, one of those was, by the way, was OPEX reduction. And we were shooting ambitiously for 60% OPEX reduction. We achieved that. I think that's really interesting to think about how you're engaging in these conversations and, the, and how you're engaging with the clients to come up with the measures and the outcomes. But I suppose, Michael, is it fair to say that you're being engaged now to bring that fresh perspective to this particular challenge that organisations are facing? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. One of the most uh, uh, often asked questions that we get is, how would Google reimagine this scenario? Or, you know, how would you bring Timex thinking, that Google Timex thinking, to this uh, conundrum that we have as a business. I think the really interesting aspect of the JPI story is that what started out as a technology conversation actually ended up being something completely different. And so we in Google, one of the things that we get is that it's not just the technology, that it's also people and process. And that we've got to find, we've got to get that blend right. If we're to infuse the Google culture of innovation with our customers' culture to get that right mix and drive that data-driven innovation, then we've got to be conscious that it's not just technology. And the JPI story is really interesting because with, with JPI, we're working with them around building that culture, around understanding their people, around understanding their needs from, a, from an enablement perspective. And so we have this, what we call cloud adoption framework. And so we're working through with the customer as we do with all cloud adopters in Google Cloud. So I think one of the key messages that we'd love for people to understand about Google is that we get it. We know that transformation is happening out there. Nobody knows it better than Google. But we have that muscle memory in Google. We know how to innovate and we're keen to share that with our customers in Google Cloud. But we know it's not just technology. It's also people process. How do you collaborate as a business? How do you break down the boundaries uh, within your organizations? And how do you effectively get your teams to collaborate in this post-COVID world of hybrid working models, for example? How do you do that? How do you do that securely? Um, you know, so there's, it's, it's multidimensional. And given that we are one of the first enterprises to operate fully in cloud, we probably get it better than most in terms of understanding the challenges that businesses have, have when they're on that cloud journey. I think you're so right around the core focus on the, ta on the talent within the organisation and the ability to absorb that level of change. Mm -hmm. But you bring up a really important point there, Michael, around the privacy and security components of cloud. And thinking about that in the context of Google, I'm about to adopt the Google Cloud for my most important enterprise workload, Lucy. How should I think about that from a privacy and security point of view when I think about the Google Cloud? Well, I, I think the most important thing that you have to remember is that the Google Cloud capability supports our most critical applications at Google. We are a one Google business. So that means that the infrastructure that we're federating out to or other organizations, it runs Google Search. It runs Google Pay. So what I would say is I think the investment that we're making is phenomenal in security because we, we know it's a moving target. But also what we're doing is we're bringing the might of everything we've learned to organisations that don't have that ability to invest themselves. I love that. So what you're saying is irrespective of my size organisation, I'm able to get the benefits of all the protections you have in place surrounding these great services that actually we all use every day. 
100%. And, and, and maybe, Michael, it does bring up uh, something. You know, is Google suitable for me irrespective of my size business? Or is this just something that you're targeting for a certain segment of the market? Well, this no, is something that, that Michael's passionate about. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I love that word democratisation, right? And uh, I think it's one of that things about cloud where, you know, like there's little doubt that Google is one of the most battle hardened uh, enterprises from a security perspective, given mm -hmm. all of our applications and the amount of data that we must protect for our customers and for our customers' customers. There's probably nobody more battle hardened. But the beautiful thing about cloud and especially Google Cloud is that you get that expertise from Google by way of consuming Google Cloud. And so it's the democratization of things like security. Mm -hmm. It's the democratization of data, for example. Again, coming back to our data point of earlier, uh, one of the things that we're probably proudest of in Google is our ability to democratize data and put it into the hands of everybody in the organization. And so that innovation is not a top-down uh, you know, culture, that innovation is part of something that everybody does on a daily basis. Every person in Google believes that they have the opportunity and the ability to deliver something innovative in Google. We're all encouraged to, uh, you know, to fail fast and we have that safe environment to do it. But equally, we have the technology to do it and that whole collaboration suite and that democratization of data. So, Google is a fit for every organization. It actually, it. yeah, it actually reminds me of some of the work we did with you guys over at Sainsbury's, right? Where it was yeah. very much around kind of customer insights. How do we understand and get that predictability into yeah. sort of our forecasting tools and stuff? And uh, big global businesses at times, you know, have this real challenge. And it's a huge advantage for us with Google because we're not just looking at the organization to say, what data do you hold as an organization? We're actually looking at it going, actually, we can bring some Google Ads data to this and we right, can bring yeah. some Google Pay data to yeah, this yeah. and Google, Google Maps data to what you're doing. And then we can deliver you some really exciting insights because we can federate that capability of Google search specific to your organization. And then we can give you the transparency. So you don't need streams and reams of data science. You know, here at Google, it's like, let's keep it simple. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we delivered that great work with Accenture. I think there's two really important points you've both made. One is you're talking about helping me make better decisions at Sainsbury's around product selection and marketing to my customers. And you've talked about how you're empowering everybody in that organization to feel part of that. Yeah. And those are really two critical things when tied together yeah. will make all the difference. Yeah. But I suppose, Michael, from a, a corporate business perspective in Ireland and around Europe and in the UK, you must be seeing specific adoption now of this data-led transformations technology from Google that's making a big impact in these businesses. Yeah, and I think the key thing that the focus or the, the real interest in the market right now is around how can we future-proof ourselves from, from a data perspective and that whole AI, ML uh, modeling and that capabilities, I mean, that is absolutely within our sweet spot in Google. And we've invested heavily around cutting-edge technologies in AI, ML, uh, data, data analytics, uh, Internet of Things. Um, so the 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 kind of initial area of interest for lots of people is the same how can we better leverage our data google help us how can we better leverage our data what's interesting by the way and uh, we should probably point this out too is that we are uh, Work. We're very comfortable in Google with the whole idea of whether it's multi-cloud or whether it's a hybrid model that you're uh, looking to operate as a business. We know that many businesses want to keep some of their assets on-prem and for very good reasons. We also know that they are, may well be engaged with other cloud vendors. The beautiful thing about the Google Cloud is our open infrastructure, our ability to connect into other clouds, to connect to on-prem. So if you take Google Anthos, for example, there's an application where you can manage either multiple cloud environments or hybrid models, whether it's cloud and on-prem. So, and then, of course, we have our mothership, uh, BigQuery, where we bring all of this data together and we layer something like Looker on top of it. And from there, you can get your AI, your ML models, and you can start your, 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 your intelligent decision-making as a business. So 
it seems to always come back to data when you talk to Google, hmm. but it's data for a reason. And the reason is, how can we be smarter as a business in terms of our innovation? And of course, that's your heritage. Yes. So yeah. I can totally organizing understand. The world, yeah, yeah, organizing yes. the world's data and then, you know, like how can it's we our mission that? statement, actually. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I suppose that, that that leads me to think really about the process, the process of adopting cloud. And, and is it the case? Are these really big projects? Can we start small and see outcomes really quickly? What kind of shape is that taking, Lucy? So you can, right? So I would actually think of it as more multiple swim lanes. So we can actually do some highly innovative, low kind of um, like really efficient stuff that we can deliver quickly, especially in the world of data. The great thing about the cloud is it's there, it's ready to go, right? The most important thing is that we understand what your use cases are. And that's why we need to work with people like Accenture, right? Because we need those kind of domain expertise to understand you know, what is it that, um, you know, a retailer of the future needs? What is it that a bank is going to require so that we can kind of have those quick wins and deliver those insights relatively quickly? But what I would say is that, you know, to address some of the fundamental challenges most organisations have around sort of like those limiting factors and those barriers to cloud adoption, we actually need to kind of get in there, kind of get into the data center, understand sort of like that real tech debt situation. And at Google, we're not afraid to have those conversations. As Michael said, people come and talk to us about data and machine learning. We're the market leader, of course they do. But actually, we've got some great solutions that can help organizations with their operational day-to-day -day run costs. And how do we address that? So we developed the T10X framework where we kind of kind of put some aggressive kind of messaging in the market to say, could we, you know, deliver to you a cloud migration strategy and journey that was cost neutral, leveraging Google investment and funding? Could we deliver some OPEX, you know, aggressive OPEX reductions in the region of sort of 50, 60 percent, and also give you access to all the innovation that your organization needs through cloud? So, you know, and we've done it, right? We're doing yeah. it every single day with organizations that are as ambitious in their, you know, in their business goals as we are at Google. So have you seen the market respond to T10X then, Lucy? Yeah, I mean, that was essentially our JPI story, wasn't it? We had to go in with something really ambitious yeah. to say, look, we think you're about to do cloud badly. We, you know, we know that 80% of CIOs that have made work close to the cloud see no value in it. Like, we want to catch you right there. We feel a duty of care. You know, we want to, yeah. we believe in cloud. We want to do it right. You know, come on the journey with Google and we can talk about that. And as Michael said, we don't even expect it to be an exclusive journey. So, so yeah, and as I say, you know, we've seen um, the market respond when we've released press statements that have, res you know, resulted in a significant share price increase for that business. And that's the asset test, right? It is, it yeah. is. And, and I suppose it, it does beg the question, Michael, are we still or are you still finding there is reluctance in the market to adopt either Google Cloud or cloud at scale? Or has that really shifted now? It's shifted to a point, right? Like, I think the big challenge that every organization has is that they know that the environment they're in is rapidly changing, changing around them. And it's been driven by all sorts of drivers. Yeah. I mean, the world today is very different from what we knew maybe, uh, you know, six months ago, right? So everything changes and changes quickly. And the question that these organizations have to ask themselves is, how can we set ourselves up to be, have that ability to be more agile and more responsive to a changing environment? So I think there is probably more of an acceptance in the marketplace that cloud does give that mm. uh, agility and that ability to respond to changing circumstances. So from that perspective, I would think that things are changing pretty rapidly around people adopting cloud. The other key thing is that I think what a lot of organizations need is they need help. And really what they're looking for is a strategic partner, you know, that understands high velocity innovation. And they look to the extensions of this world and they look to the Google of this world to see how can we work together collaboratively to solve the big challenges of today. Of course, they're always, you know, thinking about security. And but I think the other thing that's very much in everybody's agenda in these times is that sustainability agenda. And how can we do all of this? How can we how can we better enable ourselves to be that agile, responsive business? But how can we do it keeping our sustainability goals in front of mind. And one of the things that we're proudest of in Google is our sustainability journey and agenda. And we will be a carbon-free business by 2030.
That's our ambition. We will be carbon free by 2030. So if you partner with Google and come on your journey with us, you can tick that sustainability box uh, also. I think that's an, an amazing ambition to have as a business. And of course, if you're in an enterprise and those goals are now so fundamental to yeah. why people will join an organisation, stay in an organisation, whether you're in technology or not. Absolutely. And I guess it brings up to my mind the conversation around talent and skills, Lucy, and the importance yeah. of having the right cloud skills in your business. And of course, that's why we have our Accenture Google Business Group that yeah. we jointly spin up together which is there to help. But I suppose from a Google point of view, where do you see that cloud skills con uh, discussion going? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the questions that you just asked Michael as well, isn't it? One of the limiting factors to cloud scaling across any organization seems to be, you know, the lack of skills. Um, and those aren't just like the purest kind of, you know, cloud native skills and things, right? These are all the skills that we need to work in the future organization, all these agile ways of working, the DevOps skills, you know, if we're going to move to sort of, you know, trying to replicate, you know, these operating models where we have full stack development and we put them at the heart of the business, you know, the development um, skills are going through the roof right now, right? So I think that it's an industry challenge. Um, that we all need to address together. And we need to start to, you know, learn the lessons of other areas and other regions where we literally look from school leavers right the way out to say, you know, technology is not sat in a basement anymore. Technology is at the board level. And we need like, you know, people to get excited, as excited as we are, um, to, to kind of like really embrace some of the challenges um, and helping sell them through technology. So yeah, it, it needs to be full adoption across the whole spectrum of, uh, of the world, right? It, it's interesting, just to add to Lucy's point, right, around the role of the CIO and how that's changed in the last, say, five to 10 years. You know, it's no longer that person in charge of the technology stack. The CIO is now one of the key innovators mm. in most, you know, like if you take a digital native, who's at the heart of innovation? CTA, in, in yeah. yeah. So so the whole, the roles They're are the changing. They're the visionary, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. These roles are changing and, 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 and those old traditional models, if you like, are, are breaking down. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's really interesting. I think the points of view around cloud, you're so right, at a board level and now coming from yeah. all directions. Yeah. And I think your point around how do we start you know, to industrialize the building of these cloud skills. And of course, mm. Google and Accenture are collaborating at a third level yeah. to kind of bring that to the forward as much as possible to say, can we start training people earlier in their careers with these necessary cloud skills? But it strikes yeah. me that when the three of us talk about innovation, it's really all about spending your time at the right stuff. Mm. And all the things like automating those repetitive processes, the collaboration yeah. you mentioned, that must be at the heart of this positioning of the right skills to do the right job and focus on the most important things. Is that what you're seeing as well, Lucy? Yeah, 100%. And it's about what, we, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, that which happens is monitored, right, and is measured. And and ultimately, you know, it goes back to sort of like, are we, are we happy with everything sat there at Green? You know, let's start to, to reimagine our KPIs of the future, our SLAs of the future. We don't want to measure sort of like the network had X amount of uptime anymore. We want to measure the amount of code that's coming into the organization, the quality of that code. How long is it taking to upgrade these applications now? And can we get it done quicker? How quickly are we building these features and functionalities to meet the business you know, ambition. And, and I think that, you know, once we start to kind of reimagine what we want to, what we want to measure as an organization, then we can get people aligned to, to those measures. So I'm hearing, you know, we've said KPIs and measurements so many times now. Yeah. It's very clear that with a clear, with a really good value case, with ambitious goals, yeah. that that is at the heart of how we start on the journey. But I suppose thinking about the future then, you know, in five years time, five plus years time, what are we all going to be thinking about when it comes to the Google Cloud? Do you want to take this one? It's an interesting question, right? Uh, and uh, should we even look five years down the road yeah. is, 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 is maybe another question, right? Because like, you know, we're just in a post pandemic uh, scenario right now. And which typically when you have disruptions like that, immediately after disruptions like that, you have a cha you have a period of rapid transformation. It's almost like somebody pressed the fast forward button. 
take hybrid working models, for example, like how has that, how significantly that has accelerated in the COVID time, in the, uh, as a result of COVID, for example. So I think the key question that you need to ask yourself is how do you future proof yourself in terms of setting yourself up now with the right technology, the right partners, you know, like Google Accenture with that deep industry knowledge, the right people, the right processes. I think if you get that mix and you get that mix right, then I think five years time will take care of itself. So Lucy, this all sounds fantastic and we've seen a lot of adoption of cloud, but are there are barriers that you're still experiencing when you're talking to clients about adopting Google Cloud. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, they're really disappointing pointing barriers right so you know i spend a lot of my time with organizations who have like are trying to tackle a monolithic technology industry full of vendor lock-ins and licensing lock-ins and tech debt and you know and ultimately the question that we kind of keep coming back to is how how much value are you getting out of these agreements and no one really can articulate that anymore we just kind of do what we've always done and you know we pay the insurance premium of support and Somehow we're never in support. So, you know, so it's kind of like, and it's not glamorous stuff to talk about. But ultimately, you know, we've had the opportunity at Google, right? We've had, you know, to, to productize and to create vendor lock-ins with the likes of Kubernetes, for example. We chose not to do it. We chose to be one of the biggest contributors to the open source community. And so, yeah, you know, I spend a lot of time with organizations going through sort of like some complex licensing agreements and when they talk to Google, they're saying, you know, Lucy, you can't, you can't sell me my Microsoft licensing or my Oracle or cheaper than I can get it from them. And I'm saying, no, but here at Google, we believe in open source. And I'm going to talk to you about how we get rid of some of those licensing lock-ins. So let's maybe think about sort of like, yeah, there might be some short-term pain, but like, let's think about the bigger goals that we're trying to achieve as an organization. So are you talking there, Lucy, about tackling my enterprise a piece at a time by saying, let's re-platform some of the assets I already have, because these are big enterprises. They've made lots of investment over the years. Yeah. So this must be a, quite, in one sense, quite a hard conversation for some people to hear. Yeah, it is. And I think that, you know, a lot of people have staked their careers on understanding and creating this complexity, right? But I'm saying it's not too late to undo a lot of it. And you know what? I'm, I'm not naive enough. You know, we believe in, in multi-cloud. We believe yeah. in hybrid cloud. So I'm not naive enough to say that we're going to get rid of all of this overnight. But let, let's come up with a meaningful transformational program of works. And I think there are quick wins. You know, when I look back to sort of like the case that we spoke about about JPI Media, like just by we didn't even affect the timescale of migration by just doing some kind of optimization around disaster recovery and we half their licensing footprint. Right. So that gave us some massive tactical wins quite quickly overnight. And those are the kind of things that we're trying to do with with, you know, with our customers that want to come work with Google. So I think what you're saying, you're an open platform, you have lots of multi-cloud offerings, and you're there to help organizations accelerate their digital transformation. Yeah. Fantastic. And we're prepared to invest. So we're prepared absolutely. to invest. Well, and we can join it all up for you, Donald, with one application called Anthos. So it doesn't matter whether you're multi-cloud, whether you're cloud on-prem with Google, you can manage all of these with one pane of glass. So that's amazing. So, so whether I've invested in SaaS or PaaS already, it's a conversation I need to have with Google. Correct. We've heard some wonderful stories about how Google Cloud's open platform and multi-cloud offerings are really helping organizations deliver those innovative solutions. I really want to thank you, Lucy, and you, Michael, for joining me today. And to all of you, thank you for watching the Accenture Cloud video series. See you soon. <laughs>